Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, it's Andy here from AM Media Games. In this video tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to set up rigid body collisions um, in Blender. So the first thing we're going to do is open a new scene, just like this one. Um, we can hide this and this, so select your camera and your light and press H. So we're just left with this cube. Press G and Z and then hold Control and move your mouse up once and that will snap it perfectly to the ground. And then we're going to add in a uh, plane. So let's do Shift A, add a mesh, add a plane, and then we can scale it up by 100. So we'll go 100, 100, 100. So we've got this scene here with a cube in the center, and then we've got this plane behind. So we're going to select our plane first, click on Physics Properties, and then we go to Rigid Body, and then we go down to Active here, and then select Passive. Change our shape calculation for collision to mesh. Uh, where is it? Yeah, that one, sorry. Mesh. And then we're going to select our cube, press tab, uh, hold control and press B. Let's bevel that out, make it a little bit prettier to look at. Um, we can give it some beveled edges there. There we go. So here we have our cube in the scene. We can a little bit of eye candy, we can change this to cavity mode so we can see those edges better. Uh, select our cube, auto smooth, and then what we're going to do now is add a uh, rigid body to this as well. So we're going to select our cube, go to rigid body, and then we're going to go down to where it says convex hull and change that to mesh. Go down to, um, actually we want that to be maybe box. Uh, let's have a look. Hmm, should we do mesh or box? We'll do mesh. Yeah, that's fine. And then we're going to go down to where it says dynamics. Bit of a moment there, wasn't it? And then we're going to click on deactivation. And then we're going to click on the drop down arrow and then start deactivated, which means that this will not animate when we press uh, play animation or start the animation. So, now that we've done that, what we can do is we can um, give this cube a texture, actually. So we can go to Textures, and we're going to go to Principal BSDF, set this to Glossy, and uh, yeah, and then set this to Glossy and give it a maybe a roughness of 0 0.3, and then set the actual color. Let's go to Material. There we go. And then set the actual color to maybe like a slightly darker gray, just like uh, a light gray, sorry, just like this. You can change that to whatever color you like. You don't have to do the same as me. You can put it as pink with yellow spots if you want. Um, so we'll do, once we've done that, we can do this plane as well. So we can create a new texture for this. We're going to name this one to plane. And we can name the other one to uh, cube. So now that we know which one's which, I'm going to select our plane and I'm going to click on principal BSDF and then we're going to go to diffuse and then we can maybe make this like a, maybe like a, a slightly darker gray. So then we have our scene ready and set up. So I'm going to go to wield and then select the strength down to, to zero. So now we have just our cube, our plane, a camera and a light that are both hidden. So that's all we should have to this point. Our next step is to multiply these. So let's figure out how we want to do this collision system or just this test. So we're going to go uh, G and X and move this out by, let's go one, two, three, four. And then we'll go Shift D and Z, move this up by maybe two. So that should snap it just above. Let's go actually G, Z, shift, and move that up very slightly so it's just above that surface, like that. That should be okay. And then we can do shift R. Actually, no, we can't do shift R because we clicked on something else. So if we delete this one, and then we go shift D, Z, move that up, and then hold shift as well. There we go. That should be fine. And then shift R to replicate that action. Shift R, 
we'll do that maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten. So two, four, six, eight, ten. That's fine. So we've got ten times. And then we can select all of these. And then we can do a nice little trick there with the 3D cursor. So we can go to rotation, 3D cursor, and then we can do shift D and then R and then Z. And we can see here that we can rotate that round. So let's go to maybe here and then shift R to replicate that action. So we have a tower of blocks and then it should look something like this. Once we've done this, we can then add another object in. So let's do uh, shift and A and go to our UV sphere and then G and Z key, move this up. We're gonna uh, scale it, so S. Actually we'll do, we need to change this back to active element and then press S. There we go. And then G and Z, make sure that's big enough. That's fine. <clears throat> So now that we have our sphere in place and we have our blocks ready and we have our plane to hold it all together to make sure it doesn't fall through the world, let's shade smooth our sphere or auto smooth it. Let's give this a material. So go to new material. I'm going to call this material our sphere. On our principal BSDF, we're going to give it a, let's do an emission texture. Why not? And then give it a strength for free. Let's go up to um, Eevee and we'll select Ambient Occlusion and Bloom and then go to Rendered View. So it obviously doesn't give off light in Eevee. So what we'd have to do is change it to Cycles and we can see there that the light's been reflected off the objects. We're going to change this to CPU to GPU Compute. So it makes a bit more sense sometimes to use the graphics card over the processor. I'm going to change our max samples in our render view to 32. I'm going to add the denoise function just so it's less noisy in our scene. Otherwise, without it, it's all bitty and grainy. So we're going to click on denoise. And now that we have our object in the scene, we can see that our object will light up as it falls through. So uh, G and Z, let's move that up. G and Z, move that up. There we go. So we can then... Let's add a little bit of a light, uh, maybe in the bottom of this. Shift A to, uh, let's do, uh, what am I doing? Light, point light, G, Z. So we can see our light there. Let's make this brighter. So go to our light properties and maybe set this to 500. Uh, maybe 1000. Let's do 1000. There we go, there's our light see our light here inside let's go and let's get our point light there it is let's move this maybe down to the bottom and let's press play let's go to material preview press play so obviously we haven't set anything up on our sphere. So let's go back to our sphere. And we're gonna to go to physics. I'm gonna to go to rigid body. I'm gonna to go to active. I'm gonna set this to 30 kilos. These are all one kilo, so this is now 30 kilos. And we're gonna to go to convex hull to sphere. So you can see there it's gonna be a sphere collision. And when we press play, it should fall through and then disperse all of those blocks quite nicely with a cool dramatic effect as it renders this out in the animation. So let's cache the um, animation. So let's go to our world. Let's go to rigid body. Let's go to cache. Let's set this to, so I'd say what, 250? Yep, and then we'll do bake. So that will bake our animation for us. Once the animation is baked into our memory, we can then, we won't be able to alter anything, move anything, um, scale anything up or anything like that, rotate anything. So it'll be there and usable. If you want to delete it, if you, take, if you pay attention to the right hand side, 
where you've got the bake button. If you look below that, you'll see delete all bakes. But when this bake finishes, you'll see it says delete. So if you want to delete it and start again or change or alter things, all we have to do is click this button and then rebake it after. So if we press space now, it will be fully animated and it will run a lot smoother. Um, so that's all done. So then what we're going to do is set up our camera. So let's go uh, control alt and zero. So now our camera's in the position that we want it to be in. Uh, let's go to our camera in our scene which is at the top I believe yeah and then let's unhide that uh, set as active camera G uh, to move it around and then right click or adjust focal distance and uh, let's go down a little bit just like that and let's go and move the frame up to this point here let's do a quick test render of this so let's have a quick look what this looks like uh, let's set this to maybe uh, 20, 28 and let's go and press F12 and see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Uh, so let's do, let's change this texture to maybe something slightly darker and a bit more reflective. And then we'll do uh, this. We'll change this to black body to give us a nice um, kind of more real to life uh, lighting effect. So let's change this to like maybe 20,000. Let's do a test render on that. Yeah, that looks way better. So you can have a play around with this. You can set this up yourself. Really simple, really easy to do. And, um, and obviously when you've finished setting up all your textures and your lighting and your camera, when you're ready to then finally actual render this into a little mini video, um, what you can do is you can go to your output. You're gonna change your output here. So this is, let's minimize all of these so we can keep focus. So we're gonna select our output um, to do that, you just left click and drag and it will close all of these panels. So we're going to click on our output and this is where you're going to store your rendered video. So this is going to be your destination for saving the render. So make sure you, you choose wisely to where you place it. Um, and then we're going to change file format from PNG because we don't we can use an image slider because we can then use um, compositing and we can turn those images into a video. Sometimes rendering as a composite is actually better than rendering as a video because if you render, for example, let's say you render as a video and you have a power cut or you, excuse me, I need a drink, talking too much. So let's say you render and you have a power cut and the power goes out or, or blender crashes if you've rendered as a PNG, you can then tell it, let's say, see how we have our start frame as one and our end frame as 250. So we could tell it to render from maybe 60. So let's say it crashed at 59 frames. Well, we don't need to render them 59 frames again, which is 59 pictures. We can then just render from 60 to complete the rest. And let's say it crashed again and you did another 100 you could then just do um, render from 160. So you're not only saving yourself time, but you probably also need a better computer. You know, no offense, but but that's a good way of doing it as well, especially if you know it's gonna crash or if you ran into that issue before. Um, and there is a little button here, if you can see where it says overwrite. So if you are doing a render and you don't want it to overwrite the image, you can just uncheck that. So then when you do a render again, let's say it comes across as frame one, it won't overwrite that frame, it will skip it. So, so that's a good way of doing that anyway. So we're gonna change ours to PNG, um, change it to FFM peg video. Um, go to encoding and then we change from Matroska to MPEG four. And then we're gonna go down to where it says medium quality and um, we can change that to high. If you wanna do a test render first, uh, you can just set this to low, so it's a little bit quicker. 
And then once you've finished setting all that up and you've got your output folder and all your destination, it's all ready to go. All you're gonna do then is um, under, make sure all these properties are set up as well. So you've got your max samples, maybe 28, 32. You don't need to set it to like a thousand. It's, it's a ridiculous amount of time to render. And then once you've done that, you can just either press Control and F12, which will start a render for the video. Or we can go up, um, we can do render, and then you can do render animation, which is the same. It's just the shortcut keys, Control F12. Uh, so that's how you set up rigid body uh, physics. Um, you can see there, when I finish rendering it out, um, it looks pretty cool with the lighting. You could also download a, um, it's called uh, Lively Wallpapers. So when you finish making your animation, you can actually then use Lively Wallpapers to then set your animation or your physics animation as a, an, a live background or wallpaper on your desktop, which is really cool as well. So um, that's it for this video. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, I apologize, but there's no point watching it if you don't like it, right? Just wasting your time. Um, if you want to help the channel grow, hit the subscribe button. It really helps to support the channel. Um, it really helps a lot. So I appreciate all of you, everyone for watching. I really appreciate all the comments. You guys are really supportive. It's really nice to have such an amazing community on, you know, in Unreal and Blender. So thanks very much for your time. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye for now.